By midnight, Harlan had tripled his original $50,000 buy-in. But everything came off the rails with one hand. And that's how it happens. That's how you go full tilt. Harlan, the best player at the table, the best player at most tables, was about to get bluffed off the win by, of all people, Bad Brad. How? Because Harlan had never played with Brad before and didn't know yet that Brad was bad. Harlan's got a boat. Nine's full. Brad's got nothing, but his pre-flop betting made it look entirely accidentally like there was a chance he had pocket kings. 20,000. Which, if true, would give him the better full house. Brad's counting off 20,000, which means he's gonna call. And Harlan knows that if Brad's gonna call and not raise, it means he didn't have the boat. And he's betting a high two pair, probably kings and queens. But then instead of calling the bet, Brad pushes $72,000 into the pot. Come on. Harlan looks at Brad. Every tell Harlan knows about, carotid artery pumping, stiff hands, Brad's doing the opposite. Brad's betting represented a huge hand by calling on the flop, check raising the turn and bombing the river. Of course, Harlan didn't know that Brad didn't know what any of that meant. So Harlan, always a good sport, said, Nice, Brad. This down. As he tossed in what he didn't realize was the winning hand. Brad tosses I'll in his cards too, and one of them flips over and Harlan sees. You didn't have pocket kings? I didn't have any kings, except the one in the middle. <laughs> you had two pair? I had one pair. The nines in the middle. <laughs> Thank you. It wasn't even that it was that much money. Harlan only lost about 40000 on the hand. But a circuit breaker blew, and Harlan was out for blood now. Everyone's. We have 112000 on the table. You want another fifty? Give me another hundred, please. Sign here for 100000 By 5 a.m., Harlan was down half a million. He'd abandoned everything he knew about poker and was playing like a frat kid, swinging for a home run on every hand. Down here, please. Hey, bud. Molly, please. Let's go. Sign here for 100. Text messages were going out, letting everyone know Harlan was bleeding. Guys were coming by to play for a couple hours before work. They'd been losing to him for months. Everyone wanted a check from Harlan Eustace. If you go home now, you can have a few hours of sleep before Sheila's party. Soon. Come talk to me. Hi, guys. Help yourself to some coffee. You're on tilt. Everybody knows it. You're playing without the weapons you need to win. You're right. All right, thank you. Just give me 500,000. I just gotta get back to even. That should be the second line of every gambler's obit. Mr. Feldstein died while trying to get back to even. Harlan never did, and he never got to his wife's birthday party. She filed for divorce two days later. But there was one last punch coming that would put Harlan on the floor for good. Harlan was heads up against a guy named Frederick, who was Austrian royalty. Go. Harlan had pocket queens. His Excellency had ace king. They were both in 65K pre flop. Flops queen 7-7. Seven, seven. Harlan has a full house again. Queens full of sevens, with three rounds of betting in front of him. The count has nothing. All in. And the count goes all in. He wants Harlan to think he's got two more sevens under there. Call. Nope, says Harlan. He's not falling for this again, and he snap calls all in. There's $750,000 on the table. Diego burns a card and deals a turn. A king. Otto von Bismarck now has two pair, kings and sevens. But two pair is nothing next to a full house. And at this point, the only hand left that can beat a queen full house is a king full house. Captain Von Trapp right. left two pair and rivered into kings full. Motherfucker! Motherfucker! 
Fuck you, you fucking mechanic. Hey. Fuck you, you bottom dealing party magician. Hey, get out of here. You've been pulling this shit on me for two days. Come on, come on. Party magician. Good? Thanks. 